Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to service a workhorse chronograph. So the name Verbena does not say anything to me and probably not you as well. Uh, pretty generic kind of setup. Um, watch for this movement. Um, but what it is, is what I assume to be a Landron 48. And the reason why I'm going to do a video on the Landron 48 is that you find a lot of chronographs for a reasonable price with this movement. And to be completely honest, it's not very fancy, but it's very robust. It's uh, made to serve a function and it does that pretty well. So you have start, stop, reset. Well, should be start, stop. Oh, when it works the way it should, it should reset at this point. I think it's just the, there we go, reset. The movement has just moved up a bit. So you can see this is in a rather large 39 millimeter case with water resistant pushers. So this would have been a, well, say they've written water protected, which is correct because it's not water resistant. I wouldn't claim that it's water resistant maybe. Um, well, not waterproof. There we go. Anyway, I'm going to take this movement apart and uh, give it a good service. Hopefully there'll be nothing wrong with it. We're just going, it's just very dirty. We're going to have a close up look at that in a second. And um, yeah, put it back together. So as my standard thing here is to do a, do this in fast film, taking it apart and then uh, do it in, at uh, normal time, putting it back together. So here you can see all the dirt and grime that has collected itself onto this movement over the years. See the hairspring down there. It does have a slight bevel on the bridges, which is nice. It, um, Teeth are in decent condition on the wheels, which is good. Plenty of fibers and dirt in there. Somebody's punched on the um, engaging lever. I don't know, know why, but it does work. So obviously that's been worn or something. Somebody's kind of expanded the surface on that, but uh, that's all right. The usual kind of wear on the screw heads. So besides being fairly manky, the, I can't see anything obviously wrong with the movement. So very happy to continue servicing this. And as you can see, it's a non-shock protected uh, balance setup. Okay, that's the movement serviced. I have fitted the uh, cap jewels back in place and uh, the balance back onto the balance cock. The balance is moving freely, so hopefully we won't have any issues with that. 
I'm going to take the balance off and we're going to start by putting the gear train back onto the movement and the setting and winding mechanism so we can see that the base movement performs somewhat where we want it to do and then we will proceed by uh, fitting the chronograph comp components. It's hard to capture on film how dirty this movement was, but it's very satisfying to uh, have it through the cleaning machine and uh, see it as clean as it is now. So one thing to remember on this movement is that the um, the um, winding, uh, so the ratchet wheel and the intermediate uh, ratchet wheel are fitted on the underside of the gear train bridge. So I got to remember to put that in place before putting the gear train bridge on. Otherwise, we won't be able to wind a watch. We'll screw that onto the other underside here. Quite nice condition, which is new, which is good. There's not too much wear on the um, on the um, in the holes here that are non jeweled Nice and freely. So one thing I forgot was, uh, well, I haven't forgot, I don't want to forget, is to fit the setting lever screw. Before fitting the gear train bridge. This, there we go, just slide in like so. I've oiled the um, center wheel and the pin for the barrel oven. So what I have to do now is make sure that the Ratchet wheel engages, and the same goes for the third wheel, the pinion going into the jewel. I'm going to look at that under the microscope. I don't want to repeat last week's incident of breaking a pin, uh, pivot. So that's all lined up, and it should be. Now I should be able to just uh, screw the uh, gear train bridges down.
So the old stem on this thing, as you can see, has had its um, thread butchered because it's very thin. It's 1.4 mil thick. Uh, luckily, I've got one with a 0 0.4, uh, no, 0 0.9 mil thread, like a normal, what's the most common thread. And um, for that, we can get a new crown for the watch. Um, the old crown kept falling off, and somebody tried to glue it. It wasn't correct. So that's going to look all right on the movement, but um, that's why we now have this long stem we have to cut down later on. Um, for the stem, I'm going to put some grease on the sliding surfaces, like so. It's a bit out of view. In here and here. And we're going to fit the sliding pinion. Add a little bit of lubrication and the winding pinion. Winding pinion, I'm going to lubricate the engagement teeth that engages with the sliding pinion. That's, what's, that's what allows you to wind the watch. There we go. Now I'm going to fit the setting lever. That I have to take it off. Excuse me a moment. And that's in place. We can fit the yoke. First, I'm going to put a little bit of grease again on the sliding surfaces, like so. There we go. And the uh, yoke spring. There we are. Grease on that. Try and center that in the camera for you. Little bit of oil on all the posts here. So we can fit the cannon pinion or the clutch pinion, depending on your preferred name. Okay, press that on pretty straight here. This is going to allow you to set your movement. Do that, that will slide on the um, center wheel. And when the center wheel turns around, uh, the friction will allow it to move the hands around. You don't need too much friction to move hands. You do need some friction. big uh, setting lever construction here. Setting lever allows you to set your watch into winding and set setting position. Quite a nicely made winding and setting mechanism on this movement. Should do a movement review on it as it's, uh, I don't want to say the word common, but it's a movement you uh, see around and uh, they don't cost a fortune. The Valjus are getting very, very expensive 
Um, the Monias aren't cheap neither. Personally, I think Lamania must be probably one of the greatest chronograph manufacturers, but that's, you know, maybe a bit biased there, but I really like them. But the uh, Landrons are definitely not bad. This is a nice, this is a proper workhorse movement. So you can see the clutch. It's just about right. Put that in, and we can wind the watch. Because it's a kind of a utilitarian finish, but then again, everything is made with quite a high quality. Um, so yeah, that movement is moving nice and freely. Very good. I'm feeling this will perform okay. Of course, I don't know the condition of the balance. Sometimes you have people filing and doing all sorts of things on balances, but I have a feeling it will be fine. Famous last words. Anyway, all right, let's fit the pallet fork. Nice beveling on this uh, balance uh, fork cock. I'm gonna line this up under the microscope and then we're going to oil the, oh, uh, wind the watch and oil the um, pallet jewels. Well, here you can see the pallet before we have oiled it. It's um, trying this little loop thing. It's not the best, but it uh, gives you an idea. I'm now going to oil it. So there you can see the little droplet of oil on the pallet. And then move the uh, pallet forward, uh, as I back and forward, and um, that uh, oil will disperse onto the escape wheel. So hopefully you can see that's the oil, both on the escape wheel and pallet, nicely um, dispersed. So yeah, let's put the balance back in. Of course, the moment of truth is if this watch will tick again. I have high hopes. There we go, no problems at all. Good start. Next, we can pop this on the timer graph. Oh. It seems to have jumped out of position. There we go. Good, now let's pop this on the time graph and see how she performs. All right, um, performance, amplitude is okay. Uh, it could be higher, uh, but at the same time, it's good enough for an old movement like this. Uh, it's steadily climbing, it's, uh, it's in okay health. It uh, looked pretty nasty to start off with, but that was the hair spring was a bit um, out of center. I didn't take a picture of that or the process of repairing it, but that's been sorted now, so I'm happy with that. We suggested to plus 12 seconds, dial down, and we turn it around to dial up. Let's see what it does. We'll do a final adjustment of time when I've put the entire watch together, but you can see the dial up variation from the dial down is not too bad, all things considered pretty much plus 10 seconds there again, so that's good variation. Um, a little bit less amplitude, but I think that's gonna climb again as it stabilizes. Time to slowly go up, take a bit of time. Um, we can do a side position. I don't have high hopes for this one. They're usually not the best poised uh, for the sides. Let's have a look, Dial, let's do crown down. This is the most common free adjustments. It's up, down, crown down. Amplitude is dropping drastically, it usually does. Big heavy balance. But that's fine. Plus 41. Yeah. Let's do crown up. There it goes down. So this balance wheel is a bit out of poise. I can poise it but uh, the customer is not looking for a cost accurate watch. He just wants a reliable, 
chronograph back and that's what it's going to get and with these uh, time variations it's probably going to equal out quite nicely in the end and um, it will keep decent time but it will work and it will work as it should which is important so um, these never seem to be the best timekeepers even when I've had ones in good condition in terms of cost chasing as I go for chronometer grading but um, that's that's not what this watch is for and the uh, Fiat customer would uh, not pay for the time of poising it. Uh, I can do it and I will probably do it on one of my own watches in a later video just to um, demonstrate how that works and um, see how accurate we can get something that's uh, got a bit of positional variation on crown down, uh, crown up, um, left, right, etc. But that's for another day. Now that I'm happy the base movement is running as it should, um, I'm going to put the chronograph modules back onto this base movement. Uh, it's a new morning, we've got a bit better light now, happy for that. We actually got sunshine, sunshine outside for a change. It's um, a wet November, so uh, yeah, good spirits. Let's see if we can get this watch back together. So this had a non-step screw, somebody had replaced that, so I have uh, had a deep look in my uh, boxes of random screws and parts, and I found a step screw that uh, fits perfectly. So you need the step screw so that you don't, um, basically the screw acts a bit of as a bridge for the um, intermediate uh, seconds recorder, and uh, the kind of you needed to hold it in place and the other screw was a normal screw so it hadn't been tightened it just been put down high enough to do the same effect but with a step screw the step will hit as you have thread and then you have a step and then the step will hit the plate uh, allowing um, the screw to be tightened yet uh, giving some free movement for the uh, for the lever in between so i'm very happy we uh, found one that fits Someone has been busy with the adjuster screws. I can see they have punched a little bit on the side of the adjuster screws. So I, screws. I assume they've been a bit loose and they have done that in order to tighten them. So hopefully we won't have any problems with that later on. So kind of the same principle as the sliding uh, the setting mechanism, all the sliding surfaces uh, can benefit with a little bit of uh, lubrication. Let's see if we can get that in focus. Here's another step screw. You can see how that's made. You can secure the um, various movement parts. Let's see, this one. See, now I have to puzzle together which ones go where because we do have a little collection of step screws. 
all for their different functions. Um, yeah. In total, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven step screws on this movement, and they all go different places. So I'm going to try and figure that out as I go along. Should not be a problem. Okay, I've spaced these out a bit. Hopefully we're going to uh, put them in the right place. I think we will. And again, we want a little bit of grease on the various contact surfaces. There we go. Let's put the um, cam and um, reset lever in place and that we're going to put a little bit of grease on the touching surfaces that engage with the um, with the uh, minute and seconds recorder cams I'm sorry, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I should know what I'm doing, but um, it might not seem that way. Okay, because in the hole here. Actually, it'd probably, probably be beneficial to secure Secure this um, intermediate minute recorder first. Ideally, using the correct screw. So, yeah, I've organized the screws a bit here now. Um, hopefully, they are correct. Sorry if I seem a little bit unsure with this movement. I have done them along lots of times, but it's a while since I've done one. There we go. Lever in there. Grease the sliding surfaces. Kind of a mantra on this. Be surprised what a little bit of grease in the right spot can do. I say, I have nothing really against a cam chronograph. Everyone who wants a cornwheel, but you know, this does the job. It's very clever construction. Let's have a look. So, so. That's the. Setting lever. That one's fairly easy to find a screw for because it has left hand thread and notches on the screw to indicate that, so it's easy to identify.
have to crease on that as well. Take a look. What's next? Um, we can pop the engaging spring. It's kind of like a uh, setting lever spring for chronographs. It uh, makes sure it tensions the uh, start-stop reset mechanism, in this case a cam, or another another turn on the uh, on the uh, column wheel. So here, well actually we can secure these screws first, it's a good idea. Getting a bit uh, distracted by myself. Seems like, Let's see, yeah, I'm using the wrong screw here because that one is too low down locking the movement. And I'll use the other one I have, which is almost identical. Again, I'll just make sure there's a bit of grease on there. Like so. Yeah, that's moving freely as it should. It's looking good. Now is a good time to fit this. As such, there's a spring that tensions on this later on, but I won't fit that before it's in the case. springs going in and that is the spring for the intermediate for the intermediate um, minute recorder wheel um, that needs to be have a spring to engage it so and that's this and we have a screw for it here Give me a second and I'll align that up. So this little spring comes in underneath here, engages with the lever there. I've not wanted to recreate it as it's a bit of a complicated bend on it, but I think we will be able to sort this out. Let's have a look. Approximately there. That's a very clumsy way of getting the screw in, as you can see. But, uh, I think I would have benefited of putting this in before the uh, lever. I'll see if I can coax it in. Uh, if not, I'll move the lever and put it in. Ah, come on! In the zen, calm, quiet, rivers flowing. Laughter, happiness. Come on, you pig. Sorry, guys, I'm just. Uh, sunshine outside, and so it's kind of. I just want to go out and play with cars and stuff, but I've got to do work as well. 
got to be good. So being a bit distracted here. Anyway, uh, good, good stuff. Now that's in, that means that this, you can see how this now springs in place, which is uh, important. Next we have the spring here to help the, that's gonna help the um, intermediate seconds recorder wheel to engage on the lever. That pushes the lever inwards, here we go. Just tighten that and I can move the spring backwards nicely like so. Might as well give that a little droplet of grease here, like that. So now this moves nicely as well. Here's a little bit of a contact point here. Give that a bit of grease. Uh, we've got this last spring, we're going to fit that when the movement's in the case. I think that spring is for the uh, alignment of this. Anyway, um, let's see, it should go something like that. So let's stop, reset, start, stop. So, oh, that's this again. Uh, reset. There you go. Yeah, that spring will push that back. Uh, start, stop, and reset. Start. All right, good stuff. Um, two very important parts missing here, and that is the actual wheel for the minute recorder. Put that in there, and the well, runner, I guess you call them. And the runner for the uh, seconds recorder. I'm going to give that a droplet of oil. Just at, around here, where it touches the inside of the center wheel, like so. And we're going to put the bridge back on. There we go. Okay, I'm almost breaking a pivot here, because I'm not thinking. I've got to make sure that this pivot is in place. There we go. Good. Nice. So this is in running position right now. And we have our, we have our overlying driving wheel for the seconds recorder, which is a push fit onto the third wheel, which comes on here. I'm just gonna double check that's, yep, yeah, that's the right way around, I believe. That is tension fitted. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a push. Make sure that's straight, that's fine, good. And our chronograph is running. Uh, one last thing before we're going to start putting the hands on this movement is the very delicate and uh, part you really don't want to bend or mark too much around with and that is the spring for the minute recorder that kind of keeps attention on the minute recorder so it goes into the right position we have two little posts on the underside of the spring it's engaged with the holes in the bridge here we go and secure that with a screw. Just gonna make sure this kind of falls into place. So, there we are. Ah, now we can do the hands. All right. So this chronograph seems to be running quite fine. I was ha having lunch, so running when I came back, so that's good. So start, um, engaged, stop, and the spring will draw this back, but I'll put that in when the movement is in the case, and reset, exit. 
And with that, I'm going to fit the hour wheel, hour wheel washer, dial, and hands. Okay, I've popped the hands on now. I did skip a little bit of that uh, to the video. Um, but uh, yeah, hands on. Next is to uh, put this movement into the case and um, shorten the stem. So now we have the uh, crown, uh, well, we have the stem shortened and the crown fitted to the right length. We have the new crown on there, that looks pretty good, happy with that. And uh, last thing we're going to do is fit the spring. Landron 48, definitely nothing wrong with that. Nice finish on the bridges, uh, fairly well jeweled. Um, yeah, it has some wire springs rather than machine springs and etc. But overall pretty good. I think uh, you can pick up a good one of these for around 300 pounds and uh, plus the service and off you go. You've got a nice usable chronograph. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind getting one if I uh, find one with a cool dial and case, etc. Um, very, very nice movements. I'm gonna pop the case back on and we'll have a look at the front. There we go, movement put back together. I adjusted the um, the uh, reset lever, so it resets at 12 now again. So you can see the minute recorder working. And uh, we have a working watch. I'm very happy with that. It was very, very dirty. Um, the old crown was just falling off all the time because you could see the, uh, the it just wasn't right. Um, now we have the new stem and we have the new crown and we have a working chronograph. So, so you can start, stop like so, we can stop and reset. Very good. So if you like this con content, please check out the other videos on the channel. Um, and uh, I also have a lot of content on my website, mitka.co.uk, check it out. I also have, uh, if you go to previous posts, there's hundreds of posts of taking apart watches, putting them back together. I have some movement reviews, um, looking at the, what I think of the build quality of several Swiss brands and other watches. And uh, yeah, just kind of uh, watch related nerd things. So if you enjoy that, check it out. And uh, until next time, have a good one.